You know, it's funny, their whole brand is pancakes, and yet I just don't think they get it right. It's good, but how often are you sober when you go home? I get it, they're pancakes. You can't really screw them up that bad, right? Flashback to IHOP, what's that? International House of Burgers, why? Hmm? IHOP has this unusually vast menu that's completely unnecessary because the whole concept is pancakes and people only go there for pancakes. I don't know how they sustain their business model, but whatever. We're here to destabilize the pancake world. So let's make this, shall we? The new kitchen's almost done, let's go look. What do you think you're doing? I can't show you that, but I can show you this. Texture over taste, available for pre-order now. Link is in the description. This is about texture, the other half of the story of making great food. Link in the description. All right, now I gotta call IHOP. We're on the way. How may I help you? I'll do a short stack of regular, and then I'll do a short stack of the blueberry pancakes. Anything else? Yes, one last thing. Just an order of the Cinestack pancakes. All right, see you then, be safe. Bye-bye. You almost said to you too. I hope you do have to be safe. You know, I've seen some pretty crazy fights break out there. We're here at the, oh my God. International House of Pinky. The side of the building gets a one out of 10, but the front of the building due to its iconic nature gets a 10 out of 10. I mean, I remember seeing that sign when I was a kid and I was like, whoa, there it is. Wait, since when did they start doing that modern art? What is that? I do kind of want to come back here just for nostalgia's sake, early in the morning or like really late at night. Someone wants to eat IHOP. No, I don't, I swear. Hi, oh, I have an order for pickup. Yeah, I'm turning this into a 10 out of 10 all around. Same lady that was on the phone, super nice. And she shit on the pancakes. This is gonna be the best bud better ever. I tipped her well. All right, I'm rating the menu also. Too long, out of 10, farted, sorry. Okay, now we go. So we've got the bag. This sauce it looks like something else. Questionable at best. Blueberry, that's it. Final one, which is just the traditional old fashioned pancake syrup. Nothing's better than maple syrup. Am I right, guys? Corn syrup, water, sugar, potassium, sorbate, and sodium benzoate to preserve freshness, caramel color, natural and artificial flavor, xanthan gum, cellulose gum, citric acid, and sulfites. Smells like a toy factory. Let's begin. This is just way too many pancakes. Okay. The pancake's not bad. What I don't like is how gummy they are. Moving on, blueberry. First off, this is not enough sauce. You gotta get through all of this dryness and this is all you get. Let me eat it like intended. It doesn't taste bad, it tastes like blueberries, but really flat, bland blueberries. I think it should be punching you in the face and it just doesn't do that. Last but not least, Vikram's favorite. See, they were smart here. Each layer has some of the cinnamon stuff. That's a good sign. Okay, this one I actually like, believe it or not. That being said, all I taste is cinnamon. There's no depth, there's no butter. And whatever this cinnamon sauce is, it just needs more. It just feels like there's something missing. I don't know what it is. So we're gonna find it. We have the three dominating pancakes for IHOP here, or at least according to the random internet source. Courses. Traditional buttermilk, double blueberry, and the Cinestack. First, we begin with traditional buttermilk, which we're gonna be using the exact same batter for all three, so this is probably the right place to start. You gotta love it when it's easy. Come on. First rule, don't just worry about over-mixing your pancakes. You should also not overthink your pancakes. It's almost symbolic. Sometimes we wanna control everything in our lives instead of just understanding that it's okay to just do things that make you happy. So, get a large bowl, add two cups or 300 grams of all-purpose flour, a quarter cup or 62 grams of granulated sugar, a quarter teaspoon or one gram of baking soda, one tablespoon or 12 grams of baking powder, one teaspoon or four grams of fine sea salt. Whisk that together until combined and try not to breathe due to the dry pancake mix wafting in the air. Then add one cup or 240 milliliters of buttermilk, half a cup or 120 milliliters of whole milk, one whole egg plus one egg yolk, two tablespoons or 21 grams of vegetable oil. Whisk that all together until combined and homogenous. And optionally, you can whisk in one teaspoon or four grams of vanilla extract, but that's only if you want a little extra pop on the behind of flavor. Well, I mean, really, that's it. You know, you don't need to get all fancy and weird on me. Just get a nonstick pan or a nonstick griddle, heat it over medium heat. Once it's hot, grease it very lightly with cooking spray. Okay, well, actually, I do have one secret. Sure, you could use a ladle or a big spoon. I'll show you a big spoon. But what I would recommend is to use a four ounce scooper. Yes, you go in there, you dunk, scoop, press the little button, let it drop, and, you know, optionally, you can spread it out if you wanna keep them perfectly circular. Then just let this cook for two minutes, flip and cook for two to three more minutes. Move that to a plate and, yeah, well, you just repeat with the rest. See, that's what I love about pancakes. It's something that's so ridiculously easy. You could train a parakeet to do it. So, yes, you at home can do this. Papa believes in you. I'm here for you. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Real nice, Josh. Now, to serve, you're just going to stack up four of those bad boys. You can add a nice little dollop, or in this case, a quenelle of softened salted butter. Of course, maple syrup. Good lord. And let's face our first opponent. See, when it's real butter, it wants to fall. This... 
That's going nowhere. These are very tall in comparison. Look at these anemic pancakes. Real maple syrup. This is amber color, rich taste, grade A. This is grade but it does look nice when it's running. That just looks like pure fluff. A little bit of syrup, a little bit of butter. The flavor's unmatched. First off, you can actually taste the butter, but the pancake itself just feels right. It tastes fresh and nice and vibrant, and it's fluffy and airy and melts in your mouth, whereas these are these artificial. But we can't have this be a win without a taste tester. Vikram's back, yeah, yeah. yeah. Poop and fart. Riddle me this. All right, here's a fork with pancake number one. Pancake number two. Number two, definitely the winner. One of these pancakes equals like three of these pancakes. I already feel like I ate a whole stack. These are fluffy, super layered, butter, syrup, fluff. There's nothing not to like. All right, on to the next. Okay, sure, you could say we won by beating their basic pancake, but it doesn't end there, okay? There is no win without discussing the toppings that make it really special. So, blueberry. We're keeping the batter the exact same as I said before. The only difference is when you make your batter for this one, you could just fold it and have a cup or 95 grams of more fresh blueberries. That's it. Then you just scoop your batter, do your thing, 21, and your pancakes will be fully done once you've cooked all your batter. But what about the blueberry sauce? I'll be honest, it was a challenge figuring this out for some reason. I couldn't figure out if the blueberries were dried or fresh. could tell if they were out of the beginning or not because, well, they wouldn't be so perfectly round. So here's what I did. Medium sauce pot. Add two cups or 190 grams of fresh blueberries, one cup or 200 grams of granulated white sugar, three tablespoons or 55 grams of lemon juice, a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of maple syrup, half a cup or 120 milliliters of water, and finally, one tablespoon or 17 grams of light corn syrup. You know, so we get that nice cohesive mirror-like gloss. It's a little uh, back pocket secret right there, by the way, with the corn syrup. Set that over medium high, bring to a boil, and reduce for about six to eight minutes or until extra thickened and and syrupy. You really want it to coat the back of a spoon. The more it clings, the thicker it looks, the better. Now pass that through a fine mesh strainer to get it extra glossy and fold in an extra half cup or 95 grams of fresh blueberries. And well, I gotta say, it looks like the dang thing. It looks correct. Hopefully it tastes correct. Now, you serve these pancakes as before. You stack them up, give them a generous, beautiful topping of your blueberry sauce. So deeply dark blue with a mirror finish almost as beautiful as the metallic specialty paint of a Lamborghini in only the finest of boutique lighting. Of course, feel free to add a quenelle or dollop of whipped cream if you so desire, which is made by simply adding one cup or 240 milliliters of heavy cream to a medium-sized bowl. Whisk that aggressively until it begins to thicken, then add two tablespoons or 14 grams of powdered sugar. Continue whisking until you get a nice, soft peak, and optionally, you can fold in one full tablespoon or 15 grams of creme fraiche. That's a fun whipped cream right there. Now we fight our next opponent. All right, a little bit of whipped cream, a little bit of berry. Oh, so fresh. One thing you won't get from theirs is this. That was the pop of a plump, juicy blueberry. To me, that's a win, but now we need our taste tester. Yeah, okay, so Vikram, you don't really like blueberries. I do not. Yeah, this seems like a bit unfair, but okay. Number one. And then number two. Best person yeah. for this one. First of all, the first one was better by a landslide. It literally punched me in the face with flavor. It's fruity as to be expected, but I really like the cream mixed with the berries, mixed with the fluffiness of the pancake. This one just fell flat. I need more of this and I don't even like blueberries. That's how good it was. Last one is Vikram's favorite. Bring it on. Okay, so we got two out of three, but this wouldn't be a butt better without a three for three. Now, last but far from least is the only pancake that I actually liked. So I'm slightly nervous. One of the most popular and inappropriately memed pancake in the restaurant world, Cinestack. This one should be easy, right? First up, the sauce that I passed out five times making. If you don't get the joke, just move along, please. Anyway, add in four ounces or 115 grams of softened cream cheese to a medium-sized bowl, beat with an electric mixer until creamy, and then add three quarters of a cup or 90 grams of powdered sugar in two batches, beating them in fully before adding the remainder. Trust me, all right? You don't want a big mess in your kitchen, then you're gonna be like, Josh, what happened? Then I'm gonna be like, ah, I'm really sorry. I should have told you, and so I'm telling you now. It's because I love you. Once that's smooth and combined, beat in two tablespoons or 35 grams of whole milk. You can always add a little more if you need to. You just want it to be a drizzleable consistency without it being water. You know, kind of like this. Finally, beat in the beans from one can of black beans. Kidding. From one vanilla bean pod, once it's thoroughly distributed, it's done. Now, moving on to the most important and slightly mysterious cinnamon spread, which who knows how theirs is made, but let's be honest. We're gonna figure it out. In a pan, add one cup or 225 grams of light brown sugar, one tablespoon or 14 grams of muscovado sugar, half a cup or 120 milliliters of water, then set that to medium. Once the sugar is completely dissolved, add in half a cup or 120 milliliters 
centimeters of maple syrup. Then at this point, you're gonna bring it to a boil over medium high until it reaches 230 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, once it reaches that temperature, turn off the heat, then whisk in two and a half tablespoons or 17 grams of ground cinnamon. Yes, it's gonna resist wanting to get mixed in. You'll be like, oh my God, Josh is not mixing. Just look, trust me, just keep mixing. And once that is for the most part combined, you will then whisk in a third cup or 84 grams of cold unsalted butter until homogenized, until fully melted and emulsified. Then finally add in one teaspoon or seven grams of fine sea salt. Yes, it's gonna be a little bit salty sweet, you know, think cinnamon roll vibes, right? Once that's all combined, you're gonna let that cool and take it a nice, almost jammy, salty cinnamon butter spread. Now we assemble, which I did like this. One pancake down, spread on your warmed up sauce. Next pancake, more sauce, spread. Your third pancake, you guessed it, spread. And four, well, wait a minute, this time, yeah, kidding. More cinnamon spread, okay? This stuff is insane how good it is. You will not regret putting it on that thing. Let me tell you what, all right? You can put that on anything, all right? I just don't need to know everything you're uh, putting it on. Finally, drizzle the top generously with your vanilla frosting in a spiral shape if you want to avoid it looking like something that people are gonna make jokes about on the internet and say things that are inappropriate, okay? But now we face our toughest opponent yet. This is the ultimate deciding winner if we fully beat IHOP or not. Cinestack. This one I liked. Oh! We saved the best for last. I would be able to eat both of these, but in terms of clean cut flavor, this is really like eating straight up a cinnamon roll. If we won the other two, there's no way we're not winning this. Vikram, get in here. Number one. Here you go. <laughs> two. That's incredible. That's definitely the winner. Here's the difference. This one, you kind of know what to expect. This one is literally a cinnamon roll. You don't get the crispiness on the outside of a cinnamon roll, but just yeah. the gooey part of a cinnamon roll you get with this and all the same flavors. Yeah, if you want a goo, or wait, no. 